So we've got the big lead sound now, or at least the lead pattern. We don't have the exact sound that we want to use. What I'm thinking is we probably want to either have two or three different things playing the lead part. In the past, a lot of people would do、um, frequency splitting. They'd have a very、uh, sonically dense sound, and then they'd split it up in three different parts, and they'd affect the middle and the high parts, and they'd mono the low end. And we're going to kind of do the same thing, except we're going to layer this. Because this sound is going to be playing very, very loudly, we don't want to have too many other things going on. Because if you have a lot of things going on, nothing sounds loud. But the sparser your track is, the louder the sounds that are in that track sound. So what I've done here is I'm going to turn the lead sound down a bit, and I'm just going to make this one do a bit of lows and mids currently. And we're not going to do anything fancy with it. But then I'm going to create a new track. And we'll do something. This is the fun of this video. I don't know what we're gonna do either. All right, so we have the lead sound. All right, so it's playing as you can see here. Everything. It's just a, it's just an open saw, so you're getting tons of harmonics. So let's shrink it down a bit, just so we're getting some low mids. Now, as you can see here, if I bump open EQ8. We're getting a lot at 50 hertz, and I don't have loop turned on. Obviously, there we go. Loop that up. Back to EQ8. Okay, so we've got a lot of 50, and our kick, our kick. If we throw on spectrum, our kick is also doing 50. So you see in the previous video how I did that by ear. Which actually worked out quite well, didn't it? They're both now in the key of G. So if your ear isn't, if you if you have a hard time picking out the lower frequencies and hearing what things jive with what, this is the way that you can do it. Just use the spectrum. Okay, so that's not such a big deal because we have the side chain clamping down on it here. So if we didn't have the side chain, they were both playing at 50 hertz at the same time. Then you're gonna End up with a lot of mud, so the side chain is kind of helping us cheat the mud in that respect. So I'm not going to muck too much with the key. We'll leave it at a G for now. I'll EQ out a bit. Actually, I might turn on a little bit. Thinking of a bit of an envelope, so we had a bit of an attack on it. So we can do. See, I've got my little envelope. Switch this filter. So I'm just rolling off just a little bit here. It's too early to be mucking with them right now, so we'll get some more sounds in there and we'll see how it goes. But for now, this is going to be good enough. There we go. All right. So I could do this in racks. I'm not going to though. What I'm going to do, just to make things easier for everybody to see, is I'm going to do this using different channels. So you can do it in racks if you want. But again, for ease of、uh, everybody being able to see that, yes, there's three different parts playing it instead of me having to click in and show racks and whatnot. We're just going to do it different tracks. So、uh, it'll get a little bit hectic up here. But、uh, I think in the long run it'll work out. Now we need to decide if we're going to use a synth or a sample to do this. And since we've already done a synthy bit, why don't we use a sample? Why don't we use one of these bass hits actually? So we'll see if any of them are in key right off the bat. Pitch up my keyboard here. Saw. We don't really want that. 
。ねえ。Okay, so that one sounds all right. It's good. It adds a bit of attack onto it, which is nice. So let's.、Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this out of here. I'll drag it into our new MIDI clip. Now, this is the right note, but I'm playing right now a B flat on my keyboard. So that's going to mess things up. So, what I'll do is I'll just play a G. And then、uh, adjust the transpose here. So now when I play a G on the keyboard, it's actually a G.、Oh, it's, just a, it's just a little bit off, isn't it? All right, so let's tune it. Let's do some fine tuning. There we go. And no, I'm not going to leave it in that offbeat thing. So we can go like this and we can set the lead sound to be the in. So this is playing the exact same MIDI. But of course, it's way too low. So we'll go here and we will use the MIDI effect pitch. And since this is just a single sound, I can go ungroup. There we go. We can pitch that up 24, two octaves. Okay, so I want this to be on top of the low end. I don't want it to have any low end necessarily. So I'm going to throw a spectrum on here so you can see that, yes, there's currently a bunch of low end. Now I could pitch this up、um, another octave. By using this. But it sounds kind of flaky once it hits that upper note. So I think I'm g o i n g to leave this at the same octave we had it at. And I'm just g o i n g to cut the low end. So for that, I'll use old EQ8 and I'll move the spectrum in front of it so we can see what's going on. And I'll use the steep high cut. I'm going to use the little、uh, the Q here to give it a bit of a boost because otherwise it'll sound a little bit thin. But not too much because this,、um, this area around here is where you can get really, really muddy later on. So、uh, we may come back and adjust this. Now, since we don't have a whole lot of low stuff in here, we can do some fun effects. We could add a little bit of reverb on it. Or we could also add a bit of delay. I'm going to try the delay、um, simply again because of、uh, the mud thing. I want this part here to,、uh, to kick in really, really tough. So I don't want anything clogging it up. We may end up putting reverb on something else. But for now, filter delay and turn those up just a little bit. I've got the,、uh, the left and right muted, and I've only got a left and a right on. Going to want to do kind of the upper frequencies. Okay, so that's the lead attack. We'll name this lead attack. And then we need some mid part to it. So let's create another MIDI track. Yeah, I don't know about that delay. We'll see how it goes. So let's create a new MIDI track. And for this one, what should we use? How about operator? 
Okay, so we'll do operator and we'll do the same thing where it's gonna be coming in from the lead. So we'll say yes, get your MIDI from the lead, monitor to in. There's some fat sub for you. Operator's gotta be one of my favorite, favorite synths for bass. Let's do the pitch thing again. So we can, uh, we could use the transpose here, but uh, I like to have the pitch plug on just to remind me that yes, I've pitched it up. Put the pitch on, 24. Maybe 12. All right, let's see where we're going with this. Now, what I want is uh, kind of a wide, a wide-ish sound. So we've got the uh, the low end, we've got this attack, and now I want to kind of have some some middle filler, if that makes sense. So I'm going to cut off the real lows again. I'll use the steep filter, and <laughs> we can, so you can see here we need a little bit more harmonic action. So that's where Operator excels. So first of all, I'll select something. Let's do the uh, distorted square. And then we can, of course, modulate that. For those of you who don't know, Operator is a FM synth, which means that you see these little colors here, those represent each oscillator. As you go up the chain, each one modulates the next one. So as I increase this oscillator, it will modulate this one. So you can get some really nasty sounds out of it. And this one, uh, I don't mind if it's gonna fluctuate, so I can adjust the fine parameter. And you can hear it starting to phase. And I can adjust the spread. And then uh, we can pick a different waveform for this one. What I might do is I might change the routing here. So I'll have uh, just two and two. So you can see the square here. So uh, this B modulates A and then out, and now D modulates C and then out. So what I'm doing now is I'm gonna take out some of these mid frequencies. A lot of people like to do this sweep and whatever. Um, I usually just kind of drag and cut until it sounds, sounds a bit better. Tone, uh, we could go for a darker or a lighter tone. What I don't want is, uh, you know, those kind of old square wave sounding synths from back in the day. I don't want it to sound like that. I want it to sound kind of uh, newer than that, if that makes sense. Which means a little bit glitchier. And I won't put the filter on yet. What I want to do is maybe a bit more uh, mangling. So we could put an audio effect on it. Um, we could try we could try a little bit of reverb just to give it some more width. Now don't forget, we are also going to sidechain all of these. So what might be easier? to uh, save on CPU and to make organization a little easier is if I select them all, hit group. Yes, so now we have our main lead group. Main lead grau. I'll just, there we go, main lead. We know what it says. Okay, so now everything is going and sending its audio to this group. The group is now going to the master. So what I can do is I can take this compressor, which is on the low end, and I can just drag it to the group. 
And now everything that goes through here is compressed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the reverb for generation of very, very, very small reverb times, which can make some really cool sounding effects or it totally backfires and sounds horrible. So let's hope for the former. Yeah, I'd like it stereo. Okay, and then we'll throw a saturator on after that just to kind of bring everything up even more. And we'll see what happens if we smash it. Turn on soft clipping. Now you see we're in the red here, which I don't really like. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just copy this and chuck it after. Oh, it's gritty. It's gritty. Now let's hear what it sounds like. Actually, it doesn't sound too bad mixing in um, some of the low end of this with the low end of the lead here. So uh, you see how as you go along, you've got to kind of go back and revisit what you've done initially. So we're going to call this the Gritty Midi. No, that's cheesy. We'll just say Gritty Mid. Okay, so we've got the kind of lowish bit, which could also do with some saturation now that I think about it, just to bring in some extra harmonics. So I'm going to do this while everything is playing. I rarely, rarely like to mix. If I'm grouping sounds, I don't mix them solo because they're not going to be playing solo. So I'll always make sure that uh, everything's playing while I'm changing the sound of it, just so I can hear how it mixes in with everything else. And uh, I'm watching the meter here, and you can see that I'm outputting more than is coming in, which means it sounds louder, which of course means it sounds better. But you want to A-B everything, as I've harped on about a billion times in my other videos, you always want to A-B at the same volume, because uh, you don't want to trick yourself into thinking it sounds better when it actually doesn't. Okay, so it does add a little bit, not as much as it did when it was uh, louder, hey? So we'll leave it at that. I'll maybe take a bit, scoop some of the mids out of this one as well. Sounds better with more mids. But then you lose the kick. It's always the fine line, isn't it? In the low end, trying to get the kick in the bass. I don't know if anyone has ever said, oh yeah, I find it easy to mix my low end. So that, to me, on the headphones here, sounds like it's uh, going pretty well. I can still hear the kick coming through.
just the side chain a bit more. do as a final tweak because I'm going to apply a high cut. And I'm just going to roll off. There we go. Okay, now one of the most important things you can do is Command-S. So I'm going to save the project where we're at now and continue in the next video.